Hello and for person, this is Anton, and not so long ago, we've discussed one of the more intriguing advances in the technology that might allow us to create space elevators. The crucial technology that might one day allow us to travel to space much cheaper, much quicker, and allow us to create huge structures above planet Earth. But there are actually some other really intriguing ideas that have been proposed decades ago that only now the scientists are figuring out that we can actually build as well. Specifically, things like what you see behind me these large constructions that can potentially serve as space cities. Or basically, large space stations that have actual habitat resembling planet Earth. Now, this is a beautiful video created by Mark Garlic, a talented science artist that's been making these images and videos for a pretty long time. But this particular model is not exactly what we're going to be discussing today. Today, we're actually talking about something known as the O'Neill's Cylinder. Something that might look kind of like this, and something that some of you that play video games might be already familiar with. These particular designs are extremely common in a lot of science fiction games. And the concept behind this design was originally proposed by Gerard O'Neill and was actually part of one of his science fiction novels. But today it's a design that's understood really well and over time was actually adapted to a lot of other science fiction because scientifically this makes the most sense. This is probably one of the cheapest and best ways to create Earth-like conditions somewhere out there in outer space. And in this case, the principle is relatively simple to understand. In essence, this is a spinning cylinder, and the internal structure within the cylinder represents a kind of a foundation or the kind of a floor for pretty much everything you want to build within. And by spinning the cylinder just fast enough, you can create gravitational conditions very similar to planet Earth, while at the same time, the floor of the cylinder would serve as a protection from a lot of external radiation as well. So it's actually a brilliant design. It protects us from pretty much most of the dangers of space travel. But more importantly, it creates gravity. And all of the modern research coming from the International Space Station has actually already suggested that most of the health problems humans experience in space is really from the lack of gravity and not from radiation. As we've discussed in one of the previous videos you can find in the description below, out of several hundred astronauts examined after living on the International Space Station, not a single one developed any issues because of higher radiation levels in outer space. But almost every one of them developed one of many issues because of living in zero-g conditions. Issues with vision, issues with blood, bones, muscles, brain, and so on. There's actually quite a variety of problems that we developed by living in zero-g, and you can learn more about this in that video I mentioned. Which basically means that if we want to build a permanent station in space, or if we want to build some kind of a city-like structure, we absolutely have to have gravity somewhere inside of it. And the only viable way to create gravity without using some kind of a science fiction concept is to basically build a cylinder. I mean, you could technically build some kind of a sphere, but the cylinder in this case is the simplest and the most efficient solution. And in this case, as I mentioned, the floor or the foundation also protects us from radiation. But the question is, how do we even try to attempt to build one of these O'Neill cylinders when it would probably require at least 100 times more materials than the entire International Space Station? Well, up until recently, it was more or less in the realms of science fiction because of the complexity of the construction itself. But then this recent paper came out that made me super excited because their propositions are actually kind of brilliant and potentially could one day lead to the construction of these cylinders. And so what exactly do they propose? Well, it's actually kind of similar to what we observe in a lot of other science fiction TV shows like The Expanse. But in this case, it doesn't involve any technology that we don't possess right now. In a nutshell, they propose using asteroids. Okay, I know some of you are going, duh, of course we would use asteroids. Where else would the material come from? But they actually propose to do this in a really brilliant way. Okay, hear me out for a second. So the thing about most asteroids is that, for the most part, they're not really pure rock. As a matter of fact, the exploration of asteroids like Bennu discovered that, well, they're mostly just rubble. And it's not really hard surface at all. Now, some might be, but for the most part, the majority are not. And so if you were to spin this fast enough, and if you were to actually try to turn this into a cylinder, and for example try to build the construction within the asteroid, it would never work. As soon as any asteroid starts to spin fast enough, it will very quickly fall apart and become nothing but rubble or some kind of a ring-like object just orbiting around a common center. 
So obviously we cannot just dig inside the asteroid and try to build something within it. That's actually used in some of the TV shows and it just doesn't really work very well. But there is a way to use this asteroid for the initial foundation. So basically, how do we turn this into something resembling something like this? Well, there is maybe a way by using some of the modern materials. And so here we really are trying to figure out how to manage a large rubble system. And in order to control this rubble, you would first want to wrap something around it in order to contain the rubble and in order to be able to then shape it as you please. In this case, this is just a regular net, but the actual proposition is to use some kind of a super strong material such as graphene that we discussed previously as a potential solution to the space elevator as well. And this large net of graphene or some kind of a nanocarbon material would provide the necessary support to then start controlling the rubble as a whole. And so once it's wrapped, what do you do with it? Well, this is where you actually find a way to try to accelerate the spin of this asteroid, possibly by placing some kind of an engine on the surface or by using a lot of other physical effects in order to make it spin faster, faster and faster. The goal is to have it spin just fast enough that it creates gravitational conditions similar to what we have on planet Earth, but the other point is to make it break apart. Because as it breaks apart, it will start pushing against the carbon net and will start expanding, creating the cylindrical shape that we want. And at least in theory, will at some point stretch itself to form something similar to what you see right here, with the actual foundation or the actual floor being made out of the asteroid particles. Or basically your floor in this case is going to be made out of the rubble from the asteroid itself. And it will serve a double purpose. First of all, because this is already a spinning floor, it will provide the necessary gravity. But then, because it's also going to be relatively thick, it will provide just enough protection from external radiation as well. And once you have your floor, you can start building things on top of it. And the solution here is not really that far-fetched. It essentially requires a medium-sized asteroid that we can then spin up, and a large flexible bag made out of one of these new materials, most likely graphene. The tensile strength from the material will be enough to support everything and will even to some extent protect the structure from outside collisions as well. Naturally, this technique can also be used to maybe one day mine asteroids as well by basically having gravity do the work and shred them apart completely, turning them into flat surfaces. But it's really the idea of these space stations that makes this particular technology so exciting. Because in this case, even a relatively small asteroid, approximately 300 meters in diameter, or even smaller than asteroid Bennu in size, can provide roughly around this much area, basically the size of Manhattan. Now it's not a lot, but it's definitely not small. Here we're talking about over 50 square kilometers, or over 20 square miles. And that's of course one of the smaller asteroids. The larger the asteroid, the more area starts to become available as the cylinder grows in size, resulting in a cylinder approximately 3 kilometers across, with the thickness of regolith underneath being about 2 meters. Or in other words, pretty much everything in this particular study is already pure science, it's not science fiction. Although as I've discussed in that video on space elevators, producing so much graphene is still a little bit difficult for most companies, but we're slowly getting there as well. Which means that we technically can build these if of course there's enough funding and if there's enough will. But obviously it will probably take decades and decades of additional research before someone can come up with an actual game plan for how to make this happen one day. It would still be a pretty expensive project and it would still have quite a lot of points of failure, but trying this would be extremely important because manipulating asteroids and being able to learn about everything from the evolution of the solar system to potential mining of asteroids would actually be so much easier if someone tried to create something like this and use the asteroid's centrifugal forces to basically break itself apart in order to expose what's on the inside. And today, over a thousand asteroids that are big enough to create this have already been discovered somewhere in the solar system. And so if everything goes well, maybe in a century from now, we'll actually have hundreds or even thousands of these objects orbiting the solar system and potentially serving as a habitat for future humanity, or at least some kind of a research center or a mining colony. At the moment, we don't really know where this goes, but it's definitely one of those exciting projects that we should not abandon. For now though, that's pretty much all I have. Check out the paper and all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe check out Mark Garlick's channel that has really cool animation on it as well, and support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful Britain t-shirt you can find in the description 
Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.